गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज संपत भादु असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑफ इंग्लिश गवर्नमेंट कॉलेज श्री डूंगरगढ़ बीकानेर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टेक अप द नेक्स्ट पोएम इंटाइटल्ड वन डे आई रोट हर नेम अपॉन द स्ट्रैंड कंपोज्ड बाय एडमंड स्पेंसर एडमंड स्पेंसर is the contemporary poet of william shakespeare who belonged to the elizabethan age edmund spenser is primarily known for her epic poem entitled fairy queen he is a great poet he has written the present poem one day i wrote her name upon the strand dear students this sonnet has been derived from spencer's volume of poems that is amorettie which is a whole sequence of sonnets and the present sonnet is extracted from that volume amorettie it is one of spenser's most famous sonnets it's about the ocean love and immortality it also reveals the great power of poetry what poet or a reader of poems can resist a poem that insists upon poetry's power none is there that we can find this lyric poem touches on a classical theme the relation between time and immortality and edmund spenser employs or uses figurative language to evoke not only imagery but also an emotional response from the reader the poem shows us a vivid picture here in this poem the poet himself and his beloved they are sitting along the seaside sorry they are sitting on the seaside that the strand uh, the seashore the man is trying means the poet himself is trying to write the lady's name on the sand but unfortunately what happens the waves of the ocean they come and wash the name away then he tries again but alas all in vain the waves again wash it away the lady persuades the poet to give up the give up the attempt and says that as time passes she will also die just as the name wiped out by the tide but the poet holds a different point of view he believes that his poem will make her name immortal dear students here we should discuss about the mortality and immortality we human beings are mortals mortals means we are subject to death one day all will die means we will disappear from this world so far as poetry is concerned or the art is concerned art is immortal but human beings are mortal the creations by the human beings are immortal they are timeless 
but human beings are mortals so is the case with poetry poetry is the part of art and poetry is immortal you me and all will die will disappear will be wiped out from this world but the creations that we create will remain forever they will never vanish or perish from this world a creations or the art that we paint the art that we create will be definitely transferred to the coming generations as you know my dears the poet edmund spencer wrote this poem in 16th century five centuries back but still we are reading his poem we remember his beloved why simply because he wrote his name and her name and the memories and their love all these things are delineated in this poem and this poem we study today will definitely be transferred to the next generation so the poem becomes immortal the poem becomes timeless so the creations the art that we create it's immortal it's permanent it never die it never vanishes so there is a great idea of the poet when his beloved persuades him that leave this attempt it's all in vain don't write my name on the sand simply because it disappears it is wiped away by the wave of the ocean but the poet is of greater point of view of greater perspective of deeper aspect he argues that no your name will never be wiped out from this world because he believes that poetry never dies and he will include her name in poetry that's why he wrote this present poem let's take up the first stanza one day i wrote her name upon the strand but came the waves and washed it away again i wrote it with the second hand but came the tide and made my pains is pay beautiful stanza dears one day the poet wrote her name the name of her of his beloved of his love upon the strand strand means the seashore the sand of the the sandy part of the seashore he wrote the name but the waves of the ocean came and washed it away again he wrote he was haughty he was adamant he was strugglesome he does not give in he writes her name again on the sand but this time the tide comes and wipes her name away deletes her name next vain man said she that dost in vain i essay a mortal thing so to immortalize why myself shall like to this decay and ek my name be wiped out likewise 
Dear students, here is a greater philosophy of life. Now, the poet's beloved speaks. Vain man, O oh, haughty man, O oh, adamant man, that dost means does in vain assay. Assay means attempt. That your attempt is meaningless, your attempt is fruitless, is useless. Don't try to write my name on the sand. It's completely useless. Simply because it is swiped away by the ocean, by the oceanic waves. And you know, a mortal thing so to immortalize. And here, the poet's beloved is going to teach the poet that, oh my love, don't immortalize a mortal thing. Since I am a human being and I am mortal, so don't try to immortalize me. I'm not your creation. I'm the creation of the superpower. And you can never immortalize me because I am subject to death. For I myself shall like to do th to this decay means I would like to die. I would like to decay. Decay means die. Disappear from this world. And take my name and my name will be wiped out likewise. And you know, yes. The beloved says to the poet, that poet, oh my love, don't try to immortalize me simply because with the passage of time, I will also be wiped out from this world. I will disappear from this world. And like this name, I myself will be wiped away. I will be. made prey by the time. Not so, could I. Let better things devise to die in dust. But you shall live by fame. My verse, your virtues, rare shall eternize. And in the heavens write your glorious name. Wow. What a beautiful response by the poet. The poet here says, now the dialogue shifts from the beloved to the poet himself. He tells his girlfriend, his beloved, that better things, better things means mean things, the things of, of no importance, devise to die in dust, means only those things which have no value in this world, which are of little importance. They are destined to die in dust. Means, they die in this world, having no name and fame, having no popularity. They die at an ordinary death. But you are not an ordinary person. You are important. The things that are lower, less important than my beloved will die and become dust. But he says to the beloved, you shall live by fame. Oh my darling, oh my beloved, you shall live in this world by fame. You will never die without name and fame. I'll make you famous. I'll make you timeless. I'll make you popular through my verses. My verse, your virtues rare shall eternize. And I will use this poem as a tool, as a means to make your virtues 
eternize to make your virtues eternal permanent popular through my poetry the writing in the sand of what just a child's play poetry does all he heavy lifting involved in making someone eternal the speaker says that his verse will eternize all of his beloved's virtues and that it will write her name in the heavens not in the sand his poetry will be so awesome so powerful powerful that it will make her immortal and in the heavens write your glorious name and your name will be written in heaven you will be made glorious you will be glorified in my poem where verans death shall all the world subdue a love shall live and later life renew fantastic last couplet the poet here emphasizes his firm belief that even after death they will remain forever who will remain forever the poet and his beloved they will remain forever means they will be immortalized through this poem their love will be immortal he advocates that death will win over the whole world that is death will kill everyone in this world but their love shall live whose love the poets and the poet and the beloved's love that shall live and later life renew means everyone in this world will die but their love will go on forever because of his poetry throughout the lines of poetry their life even after death in the empire of god will be renewed thus the poet makes big claims of providing immortality to his beloved's name so dear students through the sonnet one day we will discuss about sonnet what is sonnet what are the types of sonnets how many lines are in sonnet how many stanzas are there and what thoughts are expressed through th sonnets what is couplet uh, what is quatrain we will discuss in detail so this is a beautiful sonnet in shakespearean style in english style of sonnet so last couplet expresses firm belief of the poet that all things in this world which take place which take birth will definitely one day die they will subdue subdue means surrender before death but our love shall live our love is immortal our love will be made permanent forever will be made immortal forever and in later life even after a physical death our love will be renewed through this poetry that's all for today have a nice day thank you for listening